Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm gonna make a guide about Frosty K. I'll be talking about everything about Frosty K from talents, stats, rotation. Uh, I'm gonna have like two different rotations, so this is gonna make us, this will gonna be a, like a long video. I'll be talking about rotation on Breath of Sandragosa and rotation of uh, obliteration talent. Okay guys, let's start with talents. Now, if you play, play Breath of Sandy Costa, you want these talents. You want Cold Heart. Some people like to play with this one because it's passive. But I prefer Cold Heart because you can use it in Pillar, in a pillar of Frost. So you can deal high single target damage with one shot. Now, sometimes it's hit like 40k with me. So you can time it with, uh, with Pillar of Frost. So you can deal more single target damage. It also seems better than this talent, but it's up to you. I mean, there's not much uh, big difference in damage. Uh, but if you don't like to press a new button, you can just go passive with this one if you like. <clears throat> now, the second talent you want runic attention for more uh, runic generation. It makes your auto attacks generate runic power, and that's why you need to uh, two weapons if you are playing Breath of Sacred Cosa. So you can, so you have more attack speed. And you attack it with both weapons to generate even more runic power. So if you play with, if you want to play with the Breath of Sand Nugosa, don't use two-hander, or this talent will be almost useless. <clears throat> the third talent, it's up to you. If you play dungeons, you can go with the Blighting Sleep. It make AOE stun and slow, so it will be very good for tank to kite. I always go with this one. Uh, you can go with single target stun if you want, but I prefer blind and slow in dungeons. Uh, this one you want to go with Avalanche, uh, especially if you play Red with the present champion legendary, so you can have more rim procs and deal more AoE damage. Also it's good, it's better on single target than frozen balls, but they're almost equal on single target, but in AoE Avalanche is seeming better, so I suggest to go with Avalanche for this one. Uh, this talent here is up to you. You can go with Wraith Walk if you, if you play raids, <clears throat> because sometimes if you get targeted by a mechanic and you have to move it quickly, or you're gonna wipe the raid, Wraith Walk can be very very useful here in these situations. But if you play dungeons, uh, in dungeons you don't really need that much of movement speed, because you know, the pack is just in one place and you just keep auto attacking. So you can pick between death pack if you want to help the healer a bit. Or you can go with permafrost to give you shield. Your auto attacks give you shield, so you will be more tanky. But for me, I prefer movement speed in all situations. I mean, Wrath Walk also break root. I mean, if you get rooted, uh, especially in Sanguine Depths, for example, uh, there is an add that roots you and deal high damage. So if you have this talent, you can break the root without... I mean, the healer can dispel you, so you have just to heal you. So you can help the healer by breaking the root from yourself with this talent. <clears throat> but death pack is also useful, you can just use it to heal yourself. But it absorbs the healing coming to you, so make sure uh, to know that before you use it. Or the healer won't be able to heal you. Okay, for this one you want to go with Gathering Storm for both single target and AoE. So just simple, it makes your muscles winter uh, deal more damage when you spend your runes. So that's why in AoE fights, you want to spend as much runes as you can during Grimosa's Winter, so you have, so you make it last longer and deal more damage. <clears throat> On the last talent here you have, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the Breath of Sandricosa. I will make part 2 after this with, with Obliteration, we're going to change a few talents for Obliteration, but this video is only for Breath of Sandricosa. Uh, Breath of Sandricosa gives you 2 runes when you activate it, and also give you more, 2 runes when it's end. So this is something you should know. A quasi basis on Jugosa deal AoE damage and it's not capped on targets and it deals damage in coin in front of you so always make sure when you use your breath that you position yourself in a way you hit all the ads. So let's say if the ads like doing like a line uh, with the tank, you want to stand at the beginning of this line so you make the breath hit all the ads in the front of you. Don't stand in the middle, or you're gonna just hit a few targets in the front of you, and you will end up do doing less overall DPS. So always make sure 
and also your muscles winter same thing always make sure you s you stand yourself between the targets and not far away from the targets because even the muscles winter it deal a week around you i mean it deal damage around you but if there's like a far add you can just go closer to him uh, it will, will be better or you will not be able to hit that target with your muscles winter and you will lose some damage on backs so always make sure you position yourself with a good place when you are using your spells so this is for the talents <clears throat> it's very simple now let's talk about stats now your stats will be different between raids and dungeons so in dungeons you will need mastery then crit then haste versatility at the bottom you don't want you don't ever want versatility in dungeons because all your damage is a frost uh, damage from your master's winter and your dots so you want to increase your mastery so you can deal more damage from your frost abilities so you want mastery at the top i suggest you go uh, 70 to 75 mastery i mean don't go higher or other stat will seem better so you don't want to push mastery as far as you can to 100 percent or whatever i mean i can do that but it's not a good idea and you will lose some overall dps so make sure you go between 70 to 75 percent mastery then focus on the other stat focus on crit <clears throat> and focus on haste now if you have a haste trinket let's say if you have a, a what's it called sylvanas haste trinket you should focus on crit more if you don't have a haste trinket you should focus on your haste from your stat don't focus on crit because haste is also important so you don't lose so you don't lose your ever frost stacks from your monsters winter so you have a faster global cooldown so you can go from 10 percent to 13 percent haste and crit you can go from 20 to 25 and if you don't have versatility it will be much better but because i have some gears here give me versatility and that's why i have a few versatility here and that's it for the stat for for now for raids you want to go crit uh, at least 30 percent so when you get 30 percent critical strike you should focus on the other stat haste you want high haste now for breath of Sindragosa, you want like the same haste as in dungeons you want to go like 10 percent to 13 percent haste uh, then you want mastery but I suggest you go haste, uh, don't focus so much on haste, because you can go 5% haste and you will be fine with a breath. <coughs> but after you get 30% crit strike, you want to go on mastery. Uh, also, versatility in raids will be better <coughs> than in dungeons, because you also deal physical damage from your auto attacks. I mean, most of your damage when you are fighting a boss. For example, this is Guardian. So you have a melee attacks here, you have obliterate. Obliterate not always deal frost damage, the physical damage. So you want a small amount of versatility, about five like if I want if I swap to my raid set here, I have nine percent versatility. And I have uh, this one should give me crit, but it give me mastery now. I have thirty two crit and fifty six uh, mastery. And haste is about 9%. Like you can go less if you don't have if you're not high gear enough. But this should be your perfect stat. Now also I suggest you simic yourself because this is if you if you don't want to simic yourself if you, or if you don't know how to simic yourself, how to sim yourself from raid bots. But uh, if you want the best <coughs> stat options for you, you should always sim your character. But this is should this should be close to what you should have uh, in dungeons or in raids. <clears throat> and this is of course only for Breath of Sindragosa. We're gonna talk about obliteration stats in the next video. I don't want to make this video long. Okay, now let's talk about rotation. Okay, guys. So this is a fight for me on surrender on Mythic. Now. I'm going to explain how exactly you start uh, a boss fight. Now, before I start, you should know that I'm using Marlith Soulbound here. Now, Marlith make your shield give you mastery, so you always want to use your shield just on pull, uh, so you can have your mastery buff last for two minutes, because you don't want to use it late, or uh, and you lose your mastery buff during your Breath of Sindragosa.
so always make sure you use your, your shield uh, before the pull in maximum one minute because you want to have your mastery buff during the fight and your, your breath of sand because okay so here's where we're gonna start i use i already i already used my shield it's about 20 seconds on cooldown here okay we start the pull I use the first thing I do is using my right state on four seconds because it takes some time to activate and go attack. Okay, now I start with holding blast here. I didn't use my ammunition limb because I'm gonna. I was saving it for the ads, but if you are fighting another boss, you should. Uh, and if you are using Marley Soulbound or uh, or Bonnie Smith Soulbound because. You don't get that much benefit from your your ammunition limp. It's not like Imini. Imini give you strength, so you, you should time it with your Pillar of Frost or Breath of Sindrigosa. You don't want to use it on pool, or you're gonna lose some damage. But if you are using, if you are playing with the Bone Smith or Marleith, you should always start with ammunition limp, and hit trim immediately so you can save uh, one of your runes. But anyway, you want to start always with Hauling Blast. So this is important So you, because Hauling Blast have a chance to give you Runic Power. So you want to use it first, you might get a, a few Runic Power from it and make make you start using your breath faster. And also with the legendary Rage of the Frozen Champion, it will give you Runic Power. So I start with Hauling Blast, then I use my Remosis Winter. I, have, I already spent two runes, as you see. Now I attack to Obliterate. Here's the first obliterate, you hit trim, you don't want to waste it. Now there's the second obliterate. Now I have about 80% uh, runic power, so I'm ready to start my Breath of Sindrigosa here. Okay, so you're gonna use all your cooldowns, you're gonna use potion, you're gonna use trinket. And you're gonna use, of course, Breath of Sindrigosa with Empower Rune Weapon. Uh, now the first thing I do when I use Pillar, I use my Cold Heart. Uh, stacks immediately when I use Pillar because you don't want to cap on Cold Heart stacks for very long. So the best time to use it is on pool. I mean, it's on when you start with Pillar Frost immediately. The first thing you do is hitting Cold Heart. Here, let me go back. Here I use my Pillar and everything, and immediately I hit my Cold Heart stacks as you see here. And you just want to keep hit obliterate. With rain. Don't hit Frost Strike or anything else. Now, on the last second of Pillar of Frost, you should use your Dragon. But I think I was saving it here for the ads. But if you are fighting another boss, you always use your Dragon on the last second. So it deal maximum amount of damage. Because you have so much strength from Pillar of Frost, then you use your Dragon. Uh, okay, there is one thing I forget to mention about the Dragon. Now, because I'm using Marley Soulbound. And now it have a debuff here, which increases your damage on the target for 15 seconds. Now I know you want to use your dragon on the last second, but it's better to use it on the last second of this debuff than using it on the last second of Pillar of Frost. Now you you are gonna already have an active Pillar of Frost uh, during this debuff, so make sure you use your dragon when when the boss have this debuff so you can deal. A very high amount of damage. It can deal up to 80,000 critical damage, and it did that so many times with me. So always make sure you time your dragon with Pillar of Frost and this debuff if you are using uh, Marley Soulbound. <coughs> I didn't use it as I said because there's ads coming. I was saving for the ads. You just set obliterate and trim. This is all you have to do. Always make sure you don't. Uh, waste one of your Rembrocks uh, if you are using Rage of the Frozen Champion, so you get more runic power. Also, it's a good amount of damage every every uh, that was that was it. So it lasts about 35 seconds uh, on this fight. Uh, now I start grabbing the ads, so there is nothing else here to to watch. But this should be your rotation when you are starting a boss fight. Or when you're starting even AOE fight, because it's almost the same thing in AOE, you don't do anything else. But in AOE, always make sure you hit trim, you don't want to waste any rim procs on AOE. I hope it was clear for you guys, because I don't know. Also, if you have any question or I missed 
something that um, uh, ask in chat and comment, I will answer it. Now, if you are using Emini Soulbound, uh, which most people do because it empower also the raid. Now, Emini give you a 13% primary stat for 20 seconds. So you want to use your Impunition Limp with when you are starting your Breath of Sandricosa with Pillar of Frost so you have the maximum amount of strength. Don't use it on pool because you will lose your buff, your 20 second you're going to waste it. So always save your Ambunition Limp on when you are using your Breath of Sandricosa. This is only for Emini Soulbound. Only if you are using Emini. Okay. If you are using Marlith or Bonesmith, you can use it on pool. Because Marlith lasts for the buff lasts for 40 seconds, so you have a lot of time to uh, have a breath of Sandrigos in this 40 seconds. Bonesmith, you doesn't get any benefit from ammunition limp only for damage, so you can use it on pool. But for Emily, you should always save it for when you are using your CDs. And that's all set for single target rotation. Now let's talk about AOE rotation. Okay, guys, so you watch how what your rotation should be when you are using Breath of Sandricosa. So I'm going to I'm gonna say, talk about when you don't have a breath, when you are finished the breath, what you, what you should do. So your rotation should be simple. Just uh, you, want, you want to spend your runic power as more than your runes because Frost Strike have a more single target damage than Obliterate. Uh, so just like save two runes if you are if you have runic power if you don't have runic power you want to use your runes of course so you can get runic power but let's say if you have runic power and you have runes like two or three runes you want to use frost strike you keep using frost strike till you get killing machine so the way we're gonna do it of course we're gonna start with ram we're gonna head up the train frost strike and so just make sure you spend your like, runic power like, I have two runes here, and I have a few runic power. I use Frost Strike instead of just using my runes. Now, one thing you should do is also not to cap on runes. You should always have less than three runes, because the way Frost DK work is that he generates three runes per every time. So, let's say if you have a four runes, and you have two runes generating here, you're actually wasting one here. So I have I have a runic power, but I should use another two uh, runes so you can generate three. Of course, you don't want to have a runic power. Then you can get frost strike. So you should do like this. Use your kind of shape rocks, of course, if you got it, but just make sure you don't. I mean, if you want to use it and to cap your run power, just wait a minute, use a strike, then use the killing machine. Don't use the uh, killing machine and you know that you want to cap a running power because you're gonna just waste a frost strike attack. And it's almost the same damage. Frost strike is just less weaker than killing machine if you, if you got a crit, of course, uh, on frost strike. So that's it, you just want to focus on your uh, frost strike on single target more than your runes. Okay guys, so now we're gonna talk about the rotation for AoE. Now it's same as single target, but there's one thing you should focus on. Now if you are fighting multiple targets have all have same HP, what you should do that you need to swap between these targets. So let's say these four targets have all same HP. When I'm using my Breath of Sandricosa and hitting Obliterate and Auto Attacking, you need to swap between these targets like this. Like, give each one like 2 seconds to 3 seconds of Auto Attacking and Obliterate. And the reason why you do that is because you want to give each one a few stacks of your uh, Rune of Reservoirs from your weapon, which increases your frost damage on these targets. So, if you got each target have a 5 stacks of Rune of Reservoirs, you, it will increase your damage on that target by 15%, which is very good. Now, instead of just attacking only one, and just keep attacking only one target and leaving the others, you need to swap between each one. Uh, like this, you can hit a of course on each one. So 
Which one have a Brother Ice Fiend? I do see. This one have a Forest Stacks. Now I can swap to other one. This one have five. I'm gonna swap to another target. This one have a five. Swap to another target. And just like this. And make sure you just want to reset stacks. I'll keep swapping. So unlike like. Warriors, for example, warriors just should focus only on one target because you're gonna lose haste if you want to swap on each target. Now, Frost DK, uh, you want to swap on targets, especially if they are all same HP. Now, if you are fighting, like, uh, let's say, a pack with five adds, four are same HP and one have more HP than the others, you can swap on targets, but in some weeks, like Blustering, for example. You don't want to kill the small ones before the big one because they will get empowered. So you're gonna lose overall uh, some overall DPS, but just uh, keep attacking the big one because he must die quickly. Quickly. So that's gonna do the rotation here. He wants to of course. Hit frame. Also, make sure you always hit frames so and you got it. So I'm swapping on his target, giving him uh, five stacks of. Uh, with the rise. And of course, you want to use your dragon on the last second. Now, if you have a like a UI show the debuffs on the HP, so like some people have a UI show what debuff have here, uh, it will be much easier because I don't have an uh, add on like this. I'm gonna have to look here so to see the debuffs on the targets. Now this is a tip, don't increase your damage, some people don't do this, some people just keep attacking uh, like one target like this and keep smashing that target and uh, you don't swap, uh, I think they are actually not, you need to spread your roots to the other targets as well. Uh, and that's it. Same rotation as single target with the Breath of San It's the same as AoE, except that you need to swap, as I said, just to get more damage from Rune of Rise. Okay, let's talk about if you don't have a Breath of San and uh, you want to do AoE rotation. Now, what you should know that the Frost DK, uh, Runic Power is not important in AoE. What? It's not like single target. A single target Runic Power is more important than your runes. In AoE, runes are more important than runic power, because runic power for a frost DK is only for single target damage and breath of Sundergosa. Now, if we don't have a breath of Sundergosa, we only have single target damage. And let's say if you are fighting uh, like a 10 adds bulk, let's say if you are on the other side, for example, and the tank just pulled 10 adds, you will not gonna just keep hitting frost strikes on this because it will not like do much damage. So what you should focus on is. Uh, you have to know your spells, what is your AoE spells, which is your Moses Winter and Rim Frogs. So these are the only two AoE spells for a Frosty game, when you don't have a Breath of Sunrigosa. Of course you don't have also Munition Limb because you're going to use it with a Breath. So the only thing we have is only your Moses Winter and a few Rim Frogs. So the way we do this, we're going to use your Moses Winter and just keep hitting Obliterate. Keep hitting obliterate. Uh, if you got any rim brocks, use it immediately. You don't waste any rim brocks because it's like deals 6000 damage to each target. So if you waste it, you're gonna lose a lot of damage. So use your muscle center. Keep hitting obliterate. Those rim brocks. Um, as I said, keep solid targets. Now, when you use your, uh, your runic power, it's only to generate brocks. Now, I'm using all my runes, I'm out of runes, but I have runic power, so I use the runic power, so I can generate two more runes, so I can use them, so I can use more obliterate. But you should stop when your muscle winter ends. Now, this is only when you have your muscle winter open. Now, when your muscle winter ends, you should stop hitting uh, your runes. You should, you should empty your runic power, because you are out of runes, uh, and you don't have anything. So you want to save your runes for the next your Moses Winter when it's come. So I'm gonna do a full rotation now so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, Moses Winter. Okay, now I'm out of runes. 
So what I'm doing, I'm not, I'm not gonna use my runs, even if I'm getting machine because getting machine on every single time. What I'm doing is that I'm saving my runes for the next the remotest winter. And I'm also not losing my stacks. As you see, I still have my Everfrost stacks from my last remotest winter. So that's why you want to save your runes because you want to keep saving your Everfrost stacks so you don't lose your AoE damage. Okay, I'm gonna do double the remotest winter here so you can see it again. I use the muscle machine and set up my Everfrost stacks. I went to the RM here, you should know this. Okay, I use my power. I'm um, saving my runes for the next Master Sprinter. I still have my Everfrost yeah, stacks. I'm swapping to Darkest so I can get each one. Oh, pretty nice. And that's it. You just keep hitting uh, only when you have your Master Sprinter open. Okay, here yeah, I lost my. Uh, I think I lost my Everfrost stack. Yeah, I lost it. But uh, it depends on your haste. So I suggest you go like 10% haste in, uh, in dungeons. So this is what the uh, this is what the rotation when you don't have for uh, when you don't have a breath of sun. So you just want to keep hitting the master center. Let's see if we count the damage here. Yeah, just make sure you keep hitting ruins so you can empower your remote winter. So also empower the duration because you want it to last longer and deal more damage to the targets. And that's why we're gonna use you're gonna only spend runes because you want to empower remote winter from gathering store talent. Yeah guys, also one thing is important also, uh, so you don't use your Everfrost stacks. Now if you know that you will be able to keep your Everfrost stacks if you are tracking your uh, your debuff and your Master Winter cooldown, and you know that there's one second that if you use your Master Winter in this one second, you're gonna keep your Everfrost stacks. So make sure that you don't cast any other spell because the global cooldown can ruin your stacks. And let's say if this uh, if it's one second left on your Master Winter and you use Frost Strike, for example, you're gonna have a global cooldown. When you use your Master Center, you will you will lose your Everfrost stacks because you just uh, use um, Frost Strike or Obliterate. So just make sure you don't use any spells when your Master Center have like two seconds left. Even if you have a Killing Machine box, because you're gonna lose your AoE damage for a Killing Machine on single so on single target. So you don't want to do that because your Master Center had like two thousand to four thousand damage on each target. If you have a ten ads around you. Each ad will take 4,000 damage crit. I mean, sometimes more. Sometimes it can reach like... I don't know, I really don't play... Uh... Let's say the Master Center. 4,000 damage. So you're gonna waste 4,000 damage per hit on each target for a killing machine uh, hitting for like, let's say, 10,000. So just make sure you don't lose your Ever Frost attacks for a killing machine or a Frost Strike because you will lose a lot of AoE damage. Okay guys, there's one thing I want to mention very quickly is about Venthyr. Now, I saw some people uh, use their Venthyr Covenant ability with the Breath of Sangricosa at the same time. Now, this is a mistake because you want to use your Venthyr ability to generate runic power. When you are unable to generate runic powers, when you are out of runes, when you are out of uh, empower rune weapon, when you, have, when you don't have anything that gives you rune, runic power. So, you want to save it for when you are when you are out of empower rune weapon let's say empower rune weapon lasts for 20 seconds so you want to use your covenant ability after 20 seconds of costing your breath now the reason why 20 seconds because you don't want to save it for let's say if you are using rage of the frozen champion and you're playing high mythic key and you use rage of the frozen champion you should at least if you are not a venthyr you should at least have 30 second breath of syndicosa every time this is like if you are not using Gage of the Frozen Champion, 
you should at least have a 20 second of your breath. Now, if you are using Rage of the Frozen Champion, you should at least have 30 seconds of your breath of Syndicosa. Now, if you are a Venthyr and you are using Rage of the Frozen Champion, you should have at least 40 seconds of your breath of Syndicosa on every time. So, but the good timing on when to use your Covenant ability is after 20 seconds. And the reason why, because you don't want to use it late. Let's say if you want to use it on the end of 30 seconds. So you have like the maximum duration. The next time you're going to use your Breath of Sindigosa, you will it will be on cooldown. So if anything happened during that pull, if you got aggro for example, uh, or tank die. Oh, let's say if you got aggro because the tank die going to wipe anyway. Let's say if you got aggro, you're going to have to move far from the ads and you will not have anything to generate runic power because it's on cooldown because you use it the last time you use it late so you're gonna lose your breath on like a 20 second or maybe less so the good timing to use your covenant your, your vent here this is only for vent here the only good timing to use your covenant ability is after empower rune weapon ends which is after 20 second because empower rune weapon uh, it make you it make your breath last for long because it gave you rune and also give you runic power every five seconds but I saw some people do this mistake, so I just wanted to, to talk about it in this video. So just make sure you, if you are a Benthi, you should have a very long breath, and your, your overall DPS should be like top is the breath of Sendigosa, and not the second one. It's not like Necrolord. If you are a Necrolord, your top DPS should be Remosis Winter, then a breath. But if you are a Benthi, you should have longer duration breath, so it should be your top DPS. Okay guys, let's talk about legendaries. Now, some people keep asking me uh, which legendary is better in dungeons, Spitting Cold or Rage of the Frozen Champion. So, I'm going to talk about it in this video so you can understand uh, when to use Spitting Cold and when to use Rage of the Frozen Champion. Now, if you are a high level Frosty King, if you are like 240 idol, for example, but you don't like to push high keys, you like to stay at 15 uh, maximum, so the best legendary for you is Spitting Cold. And the reason why, because you are a high level player, high eye level, you have 240 eye level for example, and your Breath of Sendigosa will gonna do a lot of damage. But the adds have less HP than your DPS, because if you want to use your uh, Breath of Sendigosa on the adds, they will gonna die quickly, and you will not have the maximum duration of, our, of your Breath of Sendigosa. So, uh, the, what came good uh, when you are out of breath is your Moses Winter. So because the ads die quickly and you just wasting your breath that if they die in 20 seconds and you can have very long breath. You just waste there's like 10 seconds your breath is going and you're gonna just waste it and you don't have any other damage spell uh, strong enough to kill the next pack. So that's why beating cold is good for low keys because it's every 20 seconds and it can deal a very high amount of damage. I mean, I remember I was doing like 70 crit with Bitting Cold. So, Bitting Cold is for low keys from like maximum, you can go to 16 key. Uh, the level of the key is 16, maybe 17 if you are very high level. But if you want to push more keys, if you want to push high keys, you want to go Rage of the Frozen Champion because Bitting Cold, uh, I mean, Remosa Winter will not be enough to kill the adds. So you want to have something deal more damage. I mean, Breath of Sindigosa can deal 3000 damage every second to these targets. Spitting Cold deals... Uh, I mean, 3000 is not crit. If you got crit, you can deal to five or 6000 damage with the Breath of Sindigosa. So you want to make your breath last for long because the adds have more HP and also the bosses have more HP. So you want to keep your single target damage from your breath uh, long enough so you can kill the boss. Or kill the ads. That's why Rage of the Frozen Champion it will be better on high keys, so you can have a longer breath, so you don't waste your breath on a, a very low HP ads, and they will die quickly, and you just end up with the pack, and you still have some runic power going on, and your breath is keep going, and you don't want. If you have, if you ever play a key, like a high key, uh, like 17 or 18. And you are fighting a pack, your tank just made a big pull, and you are fighting this pack, and they died, and your Breath of Sendigos is still going, then you should change to Bitting Cold. 
maybe because you are very high eye level i mean for example i'm 250 so if i play 18 dungeon 18 and i have also good players good dps with me the packs are going to die very quickly that my my damage from my breath of syndicosa will be more than enough so i will not have anything else for the next pack so that's why bidding call because it's every 20 seconds so you're going to have it on every pack so that's why bidding call in this situation will be better also better in overall dps it all depends on your eye level and your skill and also your party skill because if you have like a fire mage you're going to kill everything immediately because his aoe is very strong even stronger than frost dk but it only lasts for a few seconds frost dk aoe is strong but also lasts longer time than fire mage so fire mage is going to start doing 100k dps uh, on a pool but eventually he want to get lower and lower till he reach like 30k but frosty k can start like almost a half of fire major dps but you just stay there you will not get drops because your breath lasts for very long so the best way to do it if you feel that you when you play with your friends uh, pushing 18 or 17 keys and you feel your breath is more than enough to kill the ads, then I suggest you swap to bidding cold because you are just wasting uh, your breath on ads gonna die quickly. So um, if there's a week like Trinko, for example, when bosses have more HP, you can go Rage of the Frozen Champion so you have more single target damage. But in fortified weeks, if you feel that your breath is more than enough to kill the ads, then bidding cold will be much overall dps than rage of the frozen champion but if you want to push high mythic keys when your breath will not ever be enough to kill the ads and you're gonna have to count on your your team to kill the ads then rage of the frozen champion will be a better option if you play like more than 20 if you push 21 22 or even more you want a very high single target damage on bosses or you're gonna wipe on the boss also, you want a longer duration of Breath of Sentigosa so you can kill the adds uh, quickly. And uh, that's it for the legendaries. There's, these are the two best legendaries right now. Also, uh, for raids, now, Kultira's Favor is good for only single target. If you're playing pure single target boss, like uh, Guardian for example, then Kultira's Favor will be a better DPS. But if you are fighting a boss with adds, like Sylvanas for example, or any other boss with adds, for like Bane Smith, Mythic for example, there's adds, you have to kill them quickly. So you want your breath and also a few procs of frame uh, will give you more AoE damage. So you're gonna kill the, call the, kill the boss and kill the adds faster and you will have a better DPS at the end of the fight. Kultira's favor only for single target. It also works better with obliteration than Breath of Sandrigosa. So I suggest only if you're playing obliteration, you go with Kultira's favor on single target. And beating cold for AoE because obliteration, uh, AoE is very weak. So you want beating cold to give you more AoE damage, even if you're playing high keys, because this is your only option here. Rage of the Frozen Champion is good because it gives you runic power, which is good for Breath of Syndicosa. It's not about your extra rem procs. Because even I have a Rage of the Frozen Champion at 60% a chance to get rem when you hit obliterate. I'm sp I, I spammed like 5 obliterate in a row. I, I didn't get any rem proc. So that's why uh, for obliteration, it's not a good uh, legendary. Only, only go Kultira's favor for single target. And beating cold for AoE if you're playing obliteration. For Breath of Sandrigosa, you can only go with Raider of the Frozen Champion for raids and dungeons. And beating cold only for dungeons. Uh, for low keys, as, a, as I said before. Uh, these like the only three option legendaries we have right now. And that's what's it, guys. This is what I remember about what I was about, gonna say. I'm really bad at making guides, actually. Um, also, the game is not supporting that much. I mean, I was having a hard time to find a target dummy. I mean, in Moldraxis, the target dummies are just like two target dummies on, on next to each other. Like two, 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 like this. There is no single target. There is no AoE target. I don't know what they were thinking about when they made this. So, I came to Kulturas to get these. I mean, it's also not like uh, very good targets here. 
But anyway guys, it's just to show you the rotation. If you have any question, you can ask me on the comment if I forget anything or if I uh, explain something wrong and you want to uh, correct it, just say in comment. I will reply to everyone and answer your questions. I'm gonna make another video for obliter uh, obliteration because this one is gonna take very long. So stay tuned, I'm gonna just start it. I'm gonna start making the next video for obliteration and just make it uh, uh, like a solo guide. Okay guys, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.